Hi everyone, let's talk about Euler's congruence in modular arithmetic. I'll start with the motivating goal. Let's say we have an integer that's greater than or equal to 2. Then what we want is to find an integer m, find m greater than or equal to 1, such that for all a, where gcd of a and n is equal to 1, so A is co-prime co to n, and I'll mention why in just a second. We want it to hold that A to the power of m is congruent to 1 mod n. This congruent to 1 mod n is very useful in general because what this, what this would mean is that if m is greater than or equal to 2, which uh, in most cases it will be, as we'll see in just a second, then A times a to the power of m minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. And so that would mean that a to the power of m minus 1 falls into the inverse residue class of a. So this mod congruent to the residue of 1 mod n can be very useful. Now in terms of why we have this condition, GCD of a and n is equal to 1, uh, it's because this has to be the case in order for this congruence to be true because this means a to the power of m minus n k for some integer k is equal to 1. If the GCD of a and n is greater than 1 that would divide this side and so that would divide g would divide 1 and that's impossible because then that would mean g is equal to 1. So without any further ado, let's move into the proof or rather exploration of uh, the idea that's going to lead to the proof. Let's, let's start with a lemma. We're going to need the fact that if r1, r2 all the way through to r phi of n is a reduced residue system and by reduced residue system I mean that there is one representative from every class that is uh, co-prime to n. So if that is true and GCD of a and n is equal to 1. So a, a is some integer uh, that is co-prime to n. Then what happens is that if we multiply through this by a, so we get a r1, a r2, all the way through to a r phi to the phi n, then that is also an r r Yes, reduced residue system. So in essence, if we multiply this by A, then it just permutes it. And this is, this is not hard to prove. Uh, I'll leave this proof to you. What we're going to do now is that we're going to multiply all these together. So if we multiply them all together, we get the product a r k for k equals to 1 through phi of n is equal to a to the phi of n times the product of k equals to 1 to phi of n of r k. But because this is just a permutation of the r k, we get that this is also equal to the product of k equals to 1 phi of n of rk. And now we're going to equate these two to each other. And because all these rks are um, co-prime to n, we can cancel out this product from both sides. And what we get is that a to the phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n. So our desired m is phi of n, m equals to phi of n. 
Now notice that this is not the smallest number either for an individual A or all A. Uh, there, there's often smaller numbers that work and that, that relates to something called order theory. But that's a bit too advanced for this particular video. Um, something I just want to mention is that if m is greater than, sorry, not m, but if if n is greater than or equal to 3, then phi of n is greater than or equal to 2, since since 1 and n minus 1 are distinct numbers uh, that are between 1 and n that are co-primed n, so there's at least two of these in the count for phi of n. So what that would mean is that a times a to the phi of n minus 1 is congruent to 1 because it's a to the phi of n which is congruent to 1 mod n. So this over here is a modular inverse of a. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.